Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn about the flexible content field in advanced custom fields. It is part of the pro version, so you do need to buy the plugin if you'd like to use it. But uh, the flexible content field by itself would justify purchasing the ACF plugin. It is an absolutely fantastic feature. And it basically allows you or whoever is going to be editing the WordPress website to manipulate it a bit more by uh, creating uh, predefined blocks which they can then fill out like fields and images and stuff like that. And then it will display on the website. They can drag and drop the order they'd like it into. Um, I mean, it's very hard to explain. I will show you how it works and you'll see the benefit of using it. I guess you could compare it to say using something like um, Divi or Elementor or even Gutenberg in WordPress. Um, but I think it gives you as the developer more control over the actual design because you actually predefine the designs and the user can simply select the block and use the block and fill out the only the fields in that block that apply to that specific block. All right, so let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to make the front page of the website uh, have the ability to have this flexible content field. So let's go to home page settings. And what I want to do is I want to delete everything else out of there because I want to make it just show the flexible content field. So we'll update it. We'll view the website. We'll go into the edit page and you'll see we have nothing in here now. We have the page settings one. So I'm also going to delete the page settings one because we don't need that anymore. All right, so it's all blank. Um, okay, I'll remove home page settings as well. Oh, no, no, sorry. We shouldn't remove home page settings because that's what we're going to use for the flexible content field. All right, so right now it's just blank. Let's go in there and create a new field. We'll just call it content and we'll call it flexible content. So we'll go to the flexible content field and select that uh, and we'll update that. And then what we're going to do just to keep it even simpler for the user is we're going to remove this content editor here because we don't want them to be able to use that at all if they're using the flexible content field. So ACF allows us to do that by just hiding the content ed editor on that specific screen. Click on update, refresh, and it should be gone now. So now we literally have only space for our flexible content field. Let's go into our settings for the flexible content field. And if we open it up, we have the ability to add layouts. So a layout is basically a block of code which you can reuse. So let's create a layout. We'll call it the column, column section. And ACF automatically gives it an ID. And within the column section, we want the ability to add as many columns as we want. So let's just do it. Let's add a field and this will be, we'll call it, we'll call it columns. It will be a repeater field. And it, within that repeater field, each repeater should have a title, maybe some content, and maybe a link to a separate page. So we'll use the link field type there. Cool. So now I've just created a layout which has a repeater in it, which allows you to create as many columns as you want. Let's update that and let's go to the front page because this is assigned to the front page. So we'll go to pages and we'll go to our front page, click on edit. We have the flexible content field there. If we click on add row, which I actually changed to add block, but I, without, not on this video, I deleted it. So we'll just do add, we'll make it add section again, add a section and we'll refresh it. There we go, add a section. And as you can see, the column section layout that we just created will allow, will come up. So we can click on it and you'll see that we now have the ability to create a column section. You could easily go and add another column section and then you could drag and drop between them. So that's pretty cool. But I'm just gonna remove the, the first one and we're gonna add some more content into here. You can see add row is there. I'm gonna go and change that, that button to be called add a column, Let's update it, refresh it. So we'll add a section, we'll add a column section and you'll see we now we have the ability to add a column. So I'm just gonna so test, uh, actually I'll just do column one and I'll put some lorem ipsum in there, paste that in, maybe link it to here, add another column in, column two, 
same thing, link it somewhere else. So I'll paste in some different text and then column three will be there and just use another link as well. Cool. So now we've got three columns. We'll click update and we'll view the page and obviously nothing is there yet. So we need to go into our code, go into the template that's applicable to the front page. And in my case, it is the front dash page .php. and I'll delete everything out of there. And we're just going to use the flexible content field. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the actual uh, flexible content field. Actually, we don't need to do it in this case. With the flexible content field, there is already code set up with ACF for us to do it. So to do it, what you would do is just do PHP if have rows, and then you would need to reference the ID of the flexible content field, which in our case, if we go to field groups and go to homepage settings, it is called content. If has rows, content, and we'll just close off the if statement. Then within there, we want to do a while loop, PHP while have underscore rows content, the row and PHP and while. So this is basically a check if the flexible content field does have rows. And if it does, then to display them. And then we need to check within there if it actually has the section or the layout, if, if that exists in that flexible content field. So in our case, uh, we have a column section that's part or that's been added. So it should find the column section. So let's just do PHP if get underscore row underscore layout equals, and then we just need to grab the ID. So the ID is, let's go in here and go in here. Actually, no, that's it. That's the layout. So the layout is called columns section. PHP and if. Cool. So we have basically a while loop trying to find flexible content fields that we've added to that page. And then if there is a row called column section, then to show it. So let's see if it actually has one. Yes, it works. We'll just type that in there and then we will go and refresh. As you can see, it does have a column section on that page, so it will display. So now that we have the ability to, uh, well, now that we have a column section there, let's grab the data from the actual column section. So to do that, we need to use get sub field. So let's just do a pre and then a PHP echo print R and we will then type in get sub field and the sub field within our column section is called columns. It's the repeater field called columns. So let's check that out and go and refresh. And as you can see, we are getting an array from the repeater field within that block. And basically we just treat it like we do a repeater field. So we can do it two ways. We could just basically do something like so add some lines into there and just do uh, columns equals get subfield columns. And then we could do PHP echo, uh, sorry, PHP for each columns as column. And end the for each. And inside there, we can just grab the title content and link. So title would be PHP echo column title. PHP echo content, oh, sorry, column content. I'll wrap P tags around that. And I'll just save that and have a look at it now.
So there you go, we have the three columns. Maybe we can make them use some bootstrap style. So coal LG4, which means that they'll be in a row of three. And we'll wrap a row around that. Refresh it. Cool. All right, and then maybe the link. So we could do uh, an anchor tag and do PHP echo column link and then URL and then maybe find out more. Cool. All right. But uh, you're going to notice that these links don't go anywhere because we actually have not. Oh, actually, have we? Yeah, we have selected links. But if we say don't show, uh, don't assign a link to a column and refresh, it's still going to be there. If we click on it, it's not going to work. So yeah, very important that you wrap. If you do PHP if column, actually, you could do something like. Um, yeah, you could just do column link. I was thinking you do an uh, if is set, but it is always set. It's just going to be blank. So PHP end if. All right, let's refresh it. Cool. So it doesn't have a link. Okay, so now we've just basically done the repeater field like you've learned in other videos. Uh, however, now with the flexible content field, we have we have the ability to replicate that. So we could just go add column section and add a second one. And then we could do say column four and we could put some content into there. Column five, put some content into there, update it, refresh it. And as you can see now, we have the ability to kind of, uh, you know, show different blocks and we can also move so if we minimize the, the columns, because it can get quite large, we can actually drag and drop the columns on top of each other and place it however we'd like to. Cool. All right. And then let's create another section or another layout in our flexible content field. If you go add new here and create a new one, we'll just call it text area. Actually, we'll make it text area with image. Um, and we'll make it automatically create the ID. Then we'll do two things. We'll do uh, a obviously a text area, so we'll call it content, and we'll make it automatically create the, the paragraph tags. And we'll do another one, which is called image, and we'll give it an image field type. And then maybe we'll do a select field. So uh, Basically, we're going to have a select field, which we can choose which side we want the image to come up on, either the left or the right hand side. We can make that a select field and inside there, select field, we can have two options. We can have left and right. And I guess we could make a default value. We'll just make it right. And there we go. We'll also do. Uh, no, that's that's it. That's it. So we'll click on update now and we'll go back to the admin section. And we should now have another column we can choose from, which is called text area with image. If we click into it, you'll see we have a couple of options, content, image and which side you want the image to be on. So let's grab some text and paste it into here. And then we'll also choose an image. And we'll make it so that the image is on the right hand side, which is fine. Okay, so let's go back and grab the ID of that particular layout, which is called text area underscore with underscore image. We'll go back into our code. And now we need to do another if statement. So it can get quite bloated the code. So I'll show you a way we can kind of make it easier. But we'll do this first. So we're going to check if there's another layout. So PHP if get underscore row underscore layout equals text area with image PHP and if I'll just type it works there to see if it actually works. Go and check out the front page and refresh. And as you can see, it does work because there is a, a section that exists on our page. So now what we can do is we can grab the data and display it. So I'm just going to do a simple bootstrap row 
and inside that row if we just uh, do PHP the subfield title because that relates to where are we uh, okay content image image side we haven't got a title there so I'm just going to put title as well and make it a text field okay update it again go into our contents and just type in the title this is a section refresh it okay so as you can see it comes up there but if you remember we can actually include the variables at the start of the block so we can just refer to them whenever we want so we could do title equals get sub field title content equals get sub field content what else do we have we have oops let me just refresh the page and have a look uh, we also have image and image underscore side okay so image equals get sub field image and side equals get sub field side all right so uh, the logic was supposed to be so that when you add content and you add an image you can choose which side you want the image to come on either the left or the right hand side so we could just do a couple of statements or if statements we could do within this row we could do php if side equals left and end it or maybe do an else and then do php end if obviously if it's not left it's going to be right so if it's left we want to do div col uh, we'll do a div class equals col lg6 which is half the page and we'll, we'll duplicate that so there's two of them so the left hand side is going to have the image so we will do image source equals and then we'll, we'll create another variable for the actual link to the image URL so we'll do picture equals image sizes and I'm not particularly sure what sizes we have available. I'll type medium and I'll just do a var, uh, a print r of the image variable and see what actually actually what sizes we have available because they would be all the sizes in WordPress. So we have large. We'll just make a large large so that will that will show us the URL of that specific image. So we'll do PHP echo picture and uh, we'll save that. And then we obviously want to do PHP, we'll do a title first, PHP echo title and PHP echo content. Wrap that in P tags. Actually, we might not need to because ACF will do it for us. So that's the left side. So basically if on the left, if they choose left, the picture will be on the left and the content will be on the right. Otherwise, you know, and there may be better ways to do this, more efficient ways to do this, but I'm just gonna do it the simplest way. Um, change it around. So we just grab that, paste it up there, grab the image and paste it there. Cool, so let's give this a go. We'll refresh it. Cool, so we have a section, the image is on the right, the image is massive, so we need to fix that with uh, CSS. We could just give it a class of image fluid in Bootstrap. Still not working for some reason. Let's go back and make sure I'm doing the right thing. And yes, I made a small mistake because I referred to the one if the image is showing on the left so we need to obviously repeat it on the right so this isn't the best because I'm repeating the code but just to give you an example of how it works we'll refresh now and the image should now fit within the container and yeah there's tons of text here so we might want to change that obviously if we go here and change it left side update refresh 
it's still not showing on the left. So why is that? Well, let's just debug that. Maybe I will just make sure that I've, it's saved properly. So yeah, image side left. Um, okay, that's all looks okay there. Okay, yes, get subfield image side. So it needs to refer to the ID we've created, which was image side, not side. So now we'll refresh it. Okay, so the image is on the left hand side now and the sections on the right. If we go to edit page and we change it so that it's on the right hand side, then the text should be on the left and the image on the right. Cool. All right. So now that we've created that section, we can minimize it and we can reuse it again and create another one. So let's, I'm just going to grab some of the content out of here because there's too much content in there. And we'll do this is section two, paste some code, uh, text into there, put an image in there. And if the top one was right, we'll make that one left and we'll make this one right. So they're kind of alternate. We'll update it, refresh it. And you'll see now we have two sections, one left, one right. And we can obviously repeat this for as many, as many blocks as, as we want to. So the benefits of using the flexible content field, as you can see, as a developer, is that your customers aren't gonna fiddle with the CSS. If they use something like Elementor or Divi uh, or even Gutenberg, they have the ability to go in and change CSS and muck around with all that, which can potentially affect the responsiveness of the website on mobile devices. Whereas this gives them the control to add, add uh, blocks, but it doesn't give them all the control you still have the control as the, the developer now earlier in the video i mentioned there is an easier and cleaner way to do this because right now we are just doing a huge block of code and everything can get messy uh, really fast if you have a lot of blocks so let's separate the uh, logic here each column or each section of the flexible content field should really have its own php code or page php page that you can put the code into and if you want to edit a block then you just go into that page and edit it so let's split it up so right now we have the column section and it's grabbing this so let's grab all the data from that and we will just do php get template part uh, and i'll leave that there for a sec and we'll go and create a new folder called uh you know parts and inside there, we'll create one called columns, or we'll call it section-columns.php. And we'll paste the tech or the code into there. We'll then do get template part, parts. And then the first part of the PHP file, which is section. And then create another argument, which will be columns, which stands for the text after the hyphen. So let's save that and let's go and refresh it. And it's giving us an invalid argument. So let's see why this is happening. Section columns on line three. So on line three, we have for each columns as column. And that's very silly of me because I didn't pass in the actual variable into there. So we need to take that out of there and we go into our section here and we can just basically do that. Then we can refresh it and it magically works. So by the looks of it, when we get the row layout and we include a template part, it is actually going to pass in the data from the flexible content field into this PHP file as well, which is really, really handy. So now we can do exactly the same thing for text area with image. So we'll create another part. We'll call it uh, section text with image .php. We'll paste in, we'll grab all the content that we did in here. Oops, just before the end if there. And we'll paste it into there. We'll also grab the variables out and we'll paste them 
we could just do another PHP statement right at the top here. PHP, close it off, and then just do get template part again. So I'll just copy it from here and do parts section, and then it's called text with image. Okay, so let me pretty this up a bit so we can run through it. Cool, so now when we load the page, it checks if the flexible content field has rows in it or it has content or blocks set up in it. If it does, if there is a column section that's been created, then it will get the template part of the columns code and then it will display the data. Or, uh, or as well, if there is a text area with image, it's gonna get the template part and show the code there as well. And obviously the flexible content field is very smart, so you can just basically, oh, you know what, I want this up here instead. And you can drag and drop it, view the page, and you'll see now we have columns, we have the text with image, more columns, and then text with image again. So it's very, very powerful and very, very handy. The last thing I would say is with every single piece of code that you write, make sure that you do an if statement to check if, say for example, the title or the content has been added in. So if someone went in here and they just, you know, they didn't fill out this column and they didn't fill out the, uh, actually they didn't fill out say the title, okay? You can restrict them in ACF by making it a required field, that's fine, but if you don't want to do that, you just need to really do an if statement, PHP if title or column title PHP and if, and that will save you from pain in future. Um, you know, it may not create an error if they don't fill it out, but sometimes it does depending on the field type. So that is just a handy tip. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the flexible content field tutorial. Hopefully you can see the value in using it and this, yeah, this would pretty much justify buying the Pro plugin by itself, this field. Okay, cool. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.